Alexander, but uh, this one more interesting thing, as you said right now, is uh, so-called double standards in uh, what uh, um, Europe and United States, I mean, uh, collective West says about this. Because Putin is openly looking for where to reorient uh, his uh, energy supplies. And it's quite resultive, uh, like uh, um, Russian experts says, who are not in the country, as I mentioned before. But anyways, you mentioned India and China. And, and uh, this... Um, uh, in, in, in these uh, regions, uh, we understand that maybe not all oil that were bought by China or India are used in China in Ind and India. This is double standards. When we hear about some very smart companies from collective Western countries that buy or resell Indian and Chinese uh, oil and gas bought, by, bought from Russia, but this is still Russian oil. Do you know about these cases? Uh, I don't know much about that, but I would be surprised if that's not happening because oil is a commodity. Even though different oils that come from different regions, they have different characteristics, but it's still a commodity. So oil is substitutable. Oil from Russia can be used for the same end purposes as oil from Venezuela or Saudi Arabia. So, for example, um, so there is a lot of substitution is happening even if the countries are not buying Russian oil. Do you see? So it's just a question of a degree of substitution. So, the, so for example, uh, United States doesn't buy a lot of oil uh, from uh, Middle East. United States, uh, actually now they, you know, United States can export oil. But when the United States was importing oil, the main sources were the neighboring countries. Canada, Mexico, Venezuela. Uh, Saudi Arabia was a tiny little percentage. So why did the United States care so much about the oil supplies in the Middle East. And that's because the total global global supply will affect prices. So when Russia puts the oil into China and India, they are affecting global quantity. And so some of that will definitely be, I mean, I'll be surprised if some of that is not you know, sold on in terms of products, or you can take even further, for example, plastics. If China essentially gets a subsidized, um, you know, oil at a lower prices, they can use it to produce all other materials. So they don't, it doesn't have to be oil or fuels. It could be, you know, plastic materials, a million other uh, chemicals that are produced out of oil that then will be put into toys and computers and um, all kinds of equipment that we'll buy. Unfortunately, I don't think that's something that um, we would be able to stop. It does create this double standard where you were just saying, you know, we are making Russia receive only $60 yeah. per, uh, per barrel. But then what happens after that? I think, um, I think it's just a question of feasi feasibility, you know, even that, you know, because oil, I mean, oil revenues are easier to track than revenues, you know, from selling, I don't know, pencils, uh, that may be using, um, um, plastic that was derived from some kind of petroleum uh, petroleum chemical. Um, so on, honestly, unfortunately, I think that's just, it's one of those things that I think it's, uh, the West is probably choosing not to fight that war, to find, mm -hmm. um, you know, just because it would be very difficult to achieve. When we're talking about 11th package of sanction, Everybody's talking about this sanction package will affect the third countries that's held to avoid the sanctions for Russian Federation. Talking about this, I want to add some uh, information, for example, from BBC. So BBC writes the next, uh, UK is banning uh, the import of diamonds from Russia. The US sets uh, out similar plans to ban uh, Russian diamonds last year in the European Union, has announced uh, plans to do so. so Russia earned more than four billion uh, pounds in 2022 from diamond export, the US says. However, most Russian diamonds are sent to countries like India to be polished, says Hans Market uh, uh, of the International Peace Information Service think tank. And once they are 
re-exported, it is hard to tell that they originated in Russia. As a result, U.S. sanctions have not been particularly effective, Mr. Market says. A solution could be through laser inscriptions in diamonds or through 3D scans, he said. So this is just one example of how they can uh, get through these borders of sanctions, how much money they can still make. I'm not talking about the sharp number, I'm talking about amounts. All these shams, like uh, we say, uh, that uh, they're using to avoid the sanctions. On this uh, example. I think um, um, it's, I don't know how, I, uh, that, that would be difficult to assess. They can definitely use it because remember the old story with blood diamonds, uh, how much it took to actually um, you know, prevent blood, you know, blood diamonds from the conflict areas to enter the supply okay. chain. The, the, when the, the fundamental issue here is that the consumers in the, around the world, they want to impose a certain way the product is produced. It applies to to financing, you know, war against Ukraine by Russia. It applies to other things around the world. But this is this is what we're talking about. I'm just saying it's a very common issue. The one thing that when it's successful, it's when the when the country that is trying to avoid or trying to certify their products has incentive to do so. So, for example, the countries might want to say this product is not from Russia. And if the sanctions create incentives for Indian sellers to say, hey, we need to make certain steps, like for example, 3D scanning, laser engraving, if the next consumer in the United States or um, China, hopefully, or um, European Union, if they say, if you want us to buy your products, you have to comply with a certain production and certification process, uh, then I think that would go with a long way of curbing demand for uh, for diamonds because if, if they can sell the diamonds on the global market and they are just limited to India then guess what supply and demand works the prices will have to drop they will have to accept lower prices they're still going to be selling it of course and uh, but if those diamonds can't make it into the global supply chain then you know they will be getting some some returns from from it but the um, but um, but they won't be able to reap as much benefit if all they can do is just sell to these neighboring countries. By the way, I'm saying just India and China are two enormous economies, you know, so just having that is already too much, I feel. I think India and China can and should do more to uh, stem the revenues that Russia is getting to finance the war.